Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, European markets for end of day's trading, the Tuesday, the uh, 16th of August 2016. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for uh, your latest uh, brokerage. In terms of uh, trade signal, please be sure to visit signal for trade signal for signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. Also, you can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's try and decipher exactly where this market is heading and uh, and the reaction thus far. Now, in my mid-afternoon market video highlighted the fact that Asian markets obviously were bogged down uh, overnight. The Nikkei down with the yen uh, certainly surging. USDJPY levels certainly broken below 100. I'll bring up the chart of USDJPY, folks, and show you. Uh, you can see that the USDJPY level on the four-hour chart here hit a pivot low of 99.5. It's currently back up above 100 now. Okay, certainly back up above 100 now, given the fact that you had two Fed members. Okay, especially Mr. Lockhart now, the latest individual, certainly arguing for a uh, potential rate hike, which obviously has helped the dollar. Just looking at the uh, New, New Zealand uh, dairy auction, bear with me. It's been very strong. Okay, dairy auction, very strong. Okay, so yes, certainly uh, arguing for a rate hike. Also, RBA Governor Stevens, hard to um, wave away demand for Australian dollar. Housing slump will not lead to systematic risk, etc., etc. Uh, and also arguing will, uh, ready for the Fed to raise rates. Okay, so again, third three potential central bankers all calling for rate hikes. Okay, so again... Dudley as well, Dudley calling for a potential rate hike, okay, uh, approaching time for rate hikes, doesn't see need for a lot, so again, certainly help the USD JPY rally, if I bring up the chart, the US dollar as well, let's look at the US dollar futures again, now look, bringing up your um, chart here, the daily chart, the four hour chart as well, certainly putting a potential pivot low here with Dudley's comments and Lockhart's comments, again looking for a potential rise in the dollar index, okay, so again, Certainly some food for thought, okay, certainly some food for thought in terms of uh, market price action. And again, that certainly has the uh, uh, equity markets certainly running for fear of rate hikes. Uh, and again, given the fact that they are lofty heights, I mean, if you look at the S&P 500, uh, you can see, I mean, I mentioned the fact that you are looking to potentially close the gap at 2184 yesterday. And that's exactly what we did. We, were, we actually sold off and sold it and now actually closed the gap now. Now the S&P 500, I'll try and do a separate video for US markets, uh, but for now, the S&P 500 certainly is attempting to build a base here now, okay, so again, a base at 2181, and then obviously you have gap fill above, gap fill above is seen around 2190 now, okay, so 2190 is your gap fill area, so all eyes on 2190, see if the market closes that gap, you can clearly see a H&S formation now on the S&P 500 folks, okay, all those of you are trading now, now you clearly see H&S. H&S formation down to 2175 gap fill. And then obviously you have 2164 gap fill as well. Let's just zoom into 60 60 minute chart. The 60 minute chart very, very clearly shows your H&S. You clearly see you've broken out this rising contracting wedge type pattern. Okay. And uh, you have this left shoulder here. You have your head which obviously has failed. And now looking to build this right shoulder before we actually attempt to fall. Uh, the pivot high being the uh, 2193 down to the neckline which is at 2180 and you're looking at obviously 2163 so that would be your your uh, target and that's led by obviously rate hike concerns yen uh, below 100 concerns etc etc okay so everything is indicating low for me and again looking for risk aversion trade okay to kick in right okay so going back to the fundamentals let's just quickly go through these fundamentals so basically you have the uh, the main fundamentals today was the um, uk inflation data coming in hotter than expected thereby negating any further qe or stimulus uh, or rate cuts from the boe so therefore the boe certainly is a bearish or the weakest link out of them all you had stronger data from the eurozone again sending the euro usd higher uh, and again, a stronger euro is actually uh, hurts exports. Okay, so we've certainly broken out this potential downtrend now on daily. Okay, so again, looking to potentially uh, lay an attack on the 1.14 zone. Just bear that in mind, 1.14 zone. You have been uh, pushed back now, mainly due to the fact that uh, you've had Mr. Lockhart talk about rate cuts. Again, the stronger euro is hurting European indices, given the fact that he did hit a touch a, touch a low of 1.09, and now we're currently back to 1.13 zone. Okay and potentially knocking the door of 1.14.
So a stronger euro certainly hurts European uh, equities, okay? Let's just bring up the uh, chart of uh, your, your uh, German DAX and let's just discuss that as well. Before I do, ZEW survey and uh, economic situation sentiment and current situation stronger. Uh, European trade balance strong, well, mixed, should we say. Uh, ZEW certainly stronger. Housing starts stronger uh, in the US. Building permits slightly weaker. Uh, consumer inflation lagging, okay, tepid, although the core rate was certainly stronger. Okay, red book and the red book data came in weaker. The industrial uh, data came in, industrial production came in stronger. Uh, GDT auction came in stronger. Fed Lockhart speech and Dudley speech both hawkish. Okay, we've got API data, weekly crude oil stocks later on. Okay, we'll see exactly how we can decide for that. But for now, let's just look at the technical picture of uh, the uh, European equities. Daily chart, I explained last time you had a topping tail. I explained this yesterday, folks, even the day before. Uh, you had a doji candle, you had a topping tail yesterday, and obviously you're looking for weakness today, and that's exactly what's occurred. 60-minute chart, the German DAX at the moment languishing, making lower lows, okay, or lower highs, should I say. So again, adhering to that diagonal trend line. Um, let's just look at the um, German DAX here again. See if we can bring in the trend lines. That certainly hasn't worked. But for now, uh, lower highs, okay? So lower highs. So given the fact that we've uh, adhered and re respected the lower high here, we're going to continue, okay? So let's just look here. No, no real diagonal trend line. But for now, looking at a lower high, okay, for German indices. So really, that's the uh, the theme, okay? 60-minute chart at the moment. Again, lower high. And if we break, then it brings this uh, gap fill into play, 10,360. So again, should be interesting to see if the euro really does start to move higher again it will hurt european equities the french cac let's just bring up the french cac for you daily chart the french cac is here uh topping tail yesterday obviously weakness followed through today 60 minute chart retested that potential neckline of the h and s and obviously has fallen we've broken out of this um i'll get rid of this now and clean this up for you folks okay so we've broken out of this rising contracting wedge pattern okay that's gone you have this diagonal trend line that certainly is in play. So the next real uh, support I can see now is at 4440 and potentially lower. So just bear that in mind, okay? Let's just use the diagonal trend line for now. Take the pivot high, take it to the next pivot. And that really is in play, okay? So a bearish trend line on the uh, French CAC. And that's, again, led by the uh, strength in the euro. A technical uh, pattern, technical uh, setup today, really. I mean, if you look at this, technical perfection almost. You had this uh, gap fill into gap fill resistance sold off and now holding support at this 4460 zone. So it'll be interesting to see how the market re reacts at this 4460 zone on the uh, French CAC. Okay. In terms of the FTSE 100, I have explained that this is in bearish territory and remains bearish due to the stronger inflation data, folks. Okay. You've put in a bearish engulfing candle looking to potentially read, uh, not retest, but potentially test this 686780 six, now. Exhaustion on this bearish engulfing candle. 60 minute chart, clearly a HNS formation in play, looking for 6850 to potentially test. Uh, 6860 really is the first one, and then obviously you are looking at 6820. And then looking at uh, 6780, so watch out for that zone. 10 minute chart of the uh, FTSE, clearly see a HNS formation brewing there, okay? Looking for weakness, folks, okay? Looking for weakness. You do have the unfilled gap above, though, so just be aware of that, okay? For now, it's a symmetrical waist type button. That pattern has broken to the downside. You've got support at 6890. 6896, sorry. That's one of the reasons why I closed my shorts so at plus 23 at 6896. And then the next potential support is seen at uh, 6860. Again, look for downside movement. Okay, that's the FTSE 100 situation. In terms of Euro stocks, let's bring up the Euro stocks for you. Okay, Euro stocks, here we go. So daily chart, the Euro stocks first and foremost. I explained yesterday you had a, a topping tail, horizontal resistance, 200 MA resistance, and then you therefore you are looking for moves lower, and that's exactly what's occurred. Uh, in terms of price action, previous uh, support equals resistance here. Okay, so again, looking for a move lower. You had a rising contracting wedge pattern that's broken out to the downside. You've got an unfilled gap that's obviously remained above. You're using your diagonal trend lines. And you do have this potential bear flag type pine. Okay, we've, we've, have, we've held this previous resistance equal support for now. Okay, but I'm expecting that to break on the back of a stronger euro. Okay, and looking for movement lower, given the fact that you are looking for risk aversion globally. 
So again, looking for potential support at two at three thousand, and then obviously you've got gap fill support at two nine seventy five with the two hundred MA. So looking for three thousand and two nine seventy five on the downside here, folks. Okay, in terms of the price action on the euro stocks, uh, you are building a base here at three thousand and fifteen to three zero one five. So watch out for that. You do have the unfilled gap at three zero four five. Obviously, be cognizant of that as well. Uh, resistance will be seen back at three zero three five. But if the markets continue to obviously go into risk aversion mode and you are looking at uh, 3,000, then again, 2,975, okay? That's, that, they are the levels that are in play. Okay, I think that's a market wrap. The last very well I will discuss is oil. And the reason why I want to discuss oil is because you have a lot of talk about, obviously, Saudis and the, um, the Russians coming on board together with regards to this potential, um, uh, shall we say, agreement in terms of uh, capping the uh, drop in oil. Okay, whether it's some sort of production ceiling, etc., etc. The Iranians certainly are uh, not playing ball and said that they weren't they weren't going to be part of it. So again, uh, just bear that in mind. Okay, bear that in mind. They said they were not going to be a part of it. And if they're not a part of it, then really, uh, how successful can it be? Okay, folks, how successful can it be? So, you are looking at resistance at the forty-seven dollar level. Okay, so looking for risk aversion here. If the Iranians are not a part of this uh, potential uh, production ceiling, then it's not really going to be very successful. And oil prices obviously have been rallying on the back of those potential uh, talks between Russia and, and the Saudis as well. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so I think that's a summation. Watch out 47 on oil. Once you get to 47, you are looking at risk aversion globally. Okay, so stronger dollar as well. Bear that in mind. Dudley and um, Lockhart both indicating a rate hike. Uh, and if rate hikes occur, then commodities are certainly going to get battered. And emerging markets certainly will be in the, uh, in the firing line, which in turn will obviously trigger this risk aversion trade. And we've already seen that with the USD JPY or the yen surging, and then all therefore already confirming the risk of volume trade. Okay, I think that's enough, folks. Uh, this video is too long. I always try to make them short. Please visit. Please do visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of that 25% bonus. Goodbye now.